When working in 3ds Max or 3ds Max design on a specific production project, you may be working for a company that has a configuration control system already set up that allows them to track all the assets for the current production. These assets include 3D models, textures, material libraries, and any other element that would be used in the production of the animation. Other companies simply have predefined directory structures where these assets reside either on a local computer or on a network for collaborative environments and backup. The third situation is a situation that we're in right now. We have a project that we're working on. We want to maintain some form of directory structure so we know where our assets will be going. We're not just putting a file over here and a file over there and creating a big mess. 3ds Max and 3ds Max Design provide a convenient means for working in projects and keeping project directories organized. Before we move on, if you haven't done so, and you are able to copy the understanding 3 dproductionzip file from the lesson DVD to a location on your hard drive, go ahead and do so now. Extract the zip file. It contains a project directory that we will use in order to maintain a consistent project data configuration. In order to set the project directory, click on the application button in the upper left corner. From the drop-down menu, click the Manage option. In the Manage 3D Assets window, click on the Set Projects Folder option. In the Browse for Folder dialog box, navigate to where you unzipped the Understanding 3D Production zip file and click on the Understanding 3D Project Directory. In my case, I copied it to the desktop and unzipped it on the desktop, so I'll go ahead and select it there. This now sets 3ds Max to use this directory as its default project directory. So when you go to load and save the scene files, it will look for the files within the project folder. The same thing goes for the other directories. Like the render output directory will be used as the default location for rendered files. Now that we've selected our directory that we will use as our new project folder, go ahead and click the OK button to close the dialog. We have our unit set to architectural and our project directory set to the 3D production project folder. So let's make a couple of other changes to the interface and to the grid settings. Again, we do this for consistency across the lessons. Currently, there is only one perspective view in the viewports. You may or may not have the same layout, just bear with me. In order to toggle between a single viewport and multiple viewports, we can press the Alt-W key on the keyboard. This toggles between a single viewport and four viewports. So what we want to have is four viewports. Notice now that the perspective view is active. We can see that by the yellow border around it. We're going to turn off the grid in the front view and the left viewports. To do this, move your cursor into the front viewport Right-click. That, that makes that, that viewport active. active. Then, then press the G key on the keyboard to turn off the grid. This, this is, is the keyboard, keyboard shortcut that toggles the grid on and off. And we want to turn the grid off in this viewport. Then we'll move our cursor into the left view. Right-click. Press G on the keyboard to turn it off. Now we have no grid in the front viewport and the left viewport. Now right click in the perspective viewport. This will make it the active viewport when 3ds Max loads or we reset the program. We want to change the grid layout because right now if we look at the grid spacing, it's set to 10 inches. We're going to make a few changes in order to set up the grid spacing to better suit our needs for these lessons. Go ahead and move your cursor up to the middle of the main toolbar over the 3D Snap button. Right-click on that button, and in the Grid and Snap dialog, 
click on the Home Grid tab. We're going to set our grid spacing to one inch. And make sure you use the inch mark. It's the quote on the keyboard. Otherwise, your spacing may be incorrect. So go ahead and type in one inch and hit enter. We will set our major grid lines to be every 12. This doesn't correspond to inches, it corresponds to every 12 grid lines we will have what is called a major grid line, which is a slightly darker, bolder line. Go ahead and enter 12 into the major grid lines field and hit enter. In the perspective view, we want our grid to occupy 80 feet by 80 feet. Here we need to type in the number of inches into the perspective view grid extents value. In this case, it would be 960 inches. Since this option counts the spaces and not inches and feet, we have to specify the number of grid spaces that we want the perspective view grid to occupy. Since our grid spacing is one inch, then 960 would be the perspective view grid extent. Now this sets the grid spacing and grid size for the viewports. Go ahead and close the grid and snap dialog. In order to have 3ds Max come back to the same configuration that we've set up each time we open the program or reset the program, we need to save a special file named maxstart.max. On the upper left, click the application button. Click the Save As option in the drop-down menu. We already have a file named maxstart.max, but we're going to overwrite this file with the one you are saving. So go ahead and name the file maxstart.max. Click Save. If you get a dialog that says maxstart already exists, do you want to replace it? Click Yes. That overwrites the file. In order to verify that this file has been saved properly, click on the application button in the upper left corner. Click the reset option. When it asks you if you really want to reset, go ahead and click yes to reset. Once it resets, 3ds Max will reload the maxstart.max file and all of the configuration settings will be loaded along with this file. This allows you to maintain consistency throughout a work group and it will allow us to maintain consistency throughout these lessons.